Calvary. I know surely Jesus died on Calvary. Can't you hear the hammer died on Calvary. Can't you hear The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, creator of heaven and earth, grant that as the crucified body of your dear son was laid in the tomb and rested on his holy Sabbath, we may await with him the coming of the third day and rise with him to newness of life who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 27, verses 57 through 61. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. 
and he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the sepulcher. So far, the scripture. Recounting of the trial, crucifixion, and death of Jesus. 
the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, any one for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? The crowd shouted back, Crucify him! Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify, Crucify him! him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, Pilate handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed Jesus in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. 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 They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of his purple cloak, and put his own clothing on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. The soldiers compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry Jesus' cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then the soldiers brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And the soldiers crucified Jesus and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The insurrection of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with Jesus, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by deride Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking Jesus among themselves and saying, Chief priests, he saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him. When it was noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloah, Eloah, 
Lama Shabbat Benai. Which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to Jesus to drink, saying, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way, Jesus breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow Jesus and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if Jesus were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether Jesus had been dead for some time. When Pilate learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that he had hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. At Jesus, oh, so bow down with care. He has promised. Defend me, and heal all your burden. Share. Turn thee away 
One look will bring, yes it will, salvation. Eternal, eternal life to win. nothing else matters and when you're not with us nothing else can matter amen when it was evening there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who also was a disciple of Jesus he went to Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus, and then Pilate ordered it to be given to him, and Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock, and he had rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the sepulchre. In profound sorrow, we announce the death of Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, son of God. He hung from a cross on Golgotha's hill, beaten, scourged, nailed, pierced until he was nothing but mangled flesh. The reporters are uh, that after speaking several times, he finally gave up the ghosts. Jesus is dead. Jesus is dead. All through the community in town and the surrounding cities, the news of the day, Jesus is dead. Jesus is dead. Jesus is dead. Now, what are we supposed to do now? Imagine, Jesus is dead. Can this be it? The dreams and aspirations and the potential for life-changing experiences for his followers are nailed to a cross and will now lay in a borrowed tomb. What a thought. A grave on loan. Usually, the inhabitant of a grave or a tomb becomes the sole possessor of that property. The possibility of promise and revolution have actually died. Compelled to follow this man who spoke like no other, leaving everything, a good government job, a fishing enterprise with a reputation of nets too small to handle the catch, is abandoned. Boats, bait, and tackle. Judas, the likes of Judas, Judas followed this man, hoping maybe for a position in this new denomination, organization, reformation. Perhaps the chief assistant presiding financial officer, 
of budgeting, accounts receivable, distribution of charitable funds, and kingdom capital improvement. Just maybe a start at the top. Even the youngest among these followers thought he could find a mentor, a friend. Perhaps he might become this man's, this man of hard sayings, protege. The women could now finally have equal rights, come to their culture, come to their culture where women are included in a movement, living in hope that change has today come and has set us free. But today this looks like this is it. None of this looks like it will happen because the word on the street, across town, on the hill, and in the valley, Jesus is dead. Jesus is dead. Jesus is dead. Can this be it? Can this be it? Can this be all that is left a, blood, a bloody, mangled clump of flesh, can this be it? You see, his words were strange, different, so compelling that we followed him in places where we would have never gone. We believed him. We watched him do what no other could do or had ever done. He brought Lazarus back from the dead. He has been dead too long and smelled so bad there was never a thought that Lazarus would live again. Jesus got there too late, yet he called him by his name, and up and out he came from the tomb. He even made us take off the swaddling from him and loose him, and as he said, surely he should have had power to stop his own death. The thief challenged him, if you be the son of God, get yourself down from here and take me and my buddy thief with you. And then there was a man sitting by the pool of Bethesda nearly all of his life, 38 years, just waiting. Tell me, who walks around sick people just waiting unless you are sick yourself? All these sickly, feeble, frail folk just waiting for the annual stirring of the water so they can be healed. He asked this sick man, do you want to be healed? And he had been sick so long that he didn't know how to answer the question. He just started telling his story as he had always did. I'm just waiting, just waiting. I'm just waiting. I have no one to help me, so I'm just waiting. Yet Jesus spoke to him and his disease and commanded him to get up and walk. You know how things happen when he speaks immediately. The man waiting for the water to stir at his command took up his bed and walked. Really? Can this be it? That woman who was nameless, faceless, and classless, crawling through a crowd, didn't even tell folks she was unclean. No warning at all. Just leaving a trail of blood as she crawled, sneaking through the crowd, knowing she had no business being out in public, and not a word of warning to the crowd that she was coming through. She's another one of them who broke the rules and did what the law forbids. She's a bloody mess, and she touches a man in public. That's totally against the rules. Her plan was to get in, touch him, get healed, and get out without being noticed. Sometimes you have to crawl in, touch him, get healed, and get out. What she did, uh, not included in her sneaky plan, was to get healed is that it's impossible to touch him and he not know it. How could he not know that he had been touched and healing leave him for another? You can't touch him and virtue not leave him and into, into you and he not know it. What that woman was found out, when that woman was found out, she knew that it was all over. 
The bleeding had stopped and she had been healed. She had received mercy. She had received favor. Your faith has made you whole. Honestly, honestly, can this be it? The Galilean Lakeside Federation of Morticians and Tomb Construction are not all that thrilled with Jesus either. People kept dying. He kept raising them up. Then others would die and he would raise them up. Can an undertaker get a break? Do you know the tombs and graves that have been dug out around here and we can't get a body in it? He just likes interrupting funerals right after the bleeding woman. Well, Jairus can tell you that woman with that blood disease got in the way of Jesus getting to my house in a timely manner. And when he had healed this bleeding woman, a messenger from the house informed me Jesus wasn't needed anymore because my daughter was dead. No need, no need, no need. He looks at me with no words of sympathy, no expression of condolence, and says to me, don't be afraid. And he walks into my house and tells all the grieving and bereaved folk, she's not dead, but sleeping. How insensitive can someone be? You never heard such laughter. He clears the room, takes my girl by the hand, and she sits up. She's breathing and looks like she just woke up out of a sleep. I was preparing to make final arrangements to get her buried before sundown, but all of that got changed. Yes, he raised the dead. Yes, he raised the dead. Can this be it? Really, can this be it? The blind boy, not the one from Alabama, but around the way here in town, He's usually hanging out in a busy spot like Fulton Street and Utica Avenue. Near the train station, cup in hand, stick in the other. Can you spare some change? Can you spare some change? Can you spare some change? He would rock back and forth and sometimes singing one of his best songs for some change, for some nickels, for some dimes, and maybe some quarters. The question around town about this boy, who's responsible for this boy being diseased? Who, is, who in the family did the sinning uh, that this boy should be blind? Was it his mother? Was it his father? Maybe he did something or another. This has to be someone's fault. Somebody is responsible for this. Who did it? Who did it? Who did it? And then Jesus shows up, messes with the boy gig while inquiring minds want to know. The disciples are investigating who sinned, him or his parents. Who sinned, him or his parents. He looks at us and says, neither have sinned. This happened that the works of God might be displayed in him. Then it gets thicker. He spits on the ground, makes mud pies puts the mud on the man's eyes and tell this blind boy, go wash in the pool of Siloam. I'm just wondering how the blind man knew how to find his way to the pool. I'm just asking, how's that going to work? It must have been because the first time in his life he was able to see, can this be it for real? Can this be it? This is why we followed him. He did things we had not seen before. He said things we had not heard before. We had hope, dreams, and aspirations of a revolution, a reformation, a new government, and, and ultimately a new world. But this, can this be it? What are we supposed to do now? And this is the conversation of grieving family members and friends, loved ones, and significant others. Near to a half a million families around the world are having this conversation. So many more will engage in thought 
and in question, can this be it? Will this virus take all my hopes and dreams, all my aspirations and visions for the future? What are we supposed to do now? This is not what we had planned for a whole year with our lives on hold. We looked for and we expected to see something different. Our loved ones, generations past, present, and the next generations in whom our hopes and promises are all now buried. We could not have imagined that this could have happened to the entire world. Can this be it? Jesus is dead. And we can't imagine life without him. Where else and to whom else can we turn to now? Peter has done the unthinkable. He said uh, what he said he would never do. I will never deny you. And before the rooster could crow once, he had denied Jesus three times. Peter, the once anointed and now the cutting, cussing, denying disciple, is warming himself by strange fire. He had been outed by a wench who questioned him, aren't you one of those who follow Jesus? He denied it. He cussed about it. He said, no, I don't know him. He lied about it. Yes, he swore, I don't know him. She says to him, you talk like one of them who was with him. The sound of your speech gives you away. Can this be it? James and John are getting those fishnets out of storage, and they're preparing their boats. They're going back into business. Uh, it, and it, it's what humans do when their hopes are dashed and dreams have been turned into nightmares and possibilities into horror stories. They return to business as usual, God help us. If we, we, go back, we go back to what we know, can this be it? Judas had hopes that he could be a part of the revolution, the reformation, the organization. And there would be some place, some position of prominence for him. Disappointed, offered a deal he later wished he had refused as the insider feeding out, that'll preach, he becomes the point man. This deal seems to be better than the one he was hoping for. He's the treasurer, the monitor of the money, the goods and valuables, accounts receivables, and accounts are payable usually to himself. Jesus is worshipped by this woman of questionable means, presents this uh, costly gift of perfumes. She breaks the rules. She lets down her hair, breaks open the alabaster box of expensive oil. She uses this costly oil not on his face, his hair, or his arms, but his feet. And with her hair, she wipes the excess. And Judas wants to know why was this oil being wasted on Jesus' feet and not sold for its true worth and value and the profit be placed in the treasure? Capitalism at its best. Yeah. Judas, you don't want to live with him, uh, but for sure you can't get to glory without him. Judas has made a deal to portray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, less than the cost of the oil. Uh, Jesus invites Judas to supper. Jesus washes Judas' feet. Help me, God. Invites him to the table. Feeds him first. Allows him to tip his own hand. You know, uh, one of you will deny me, and Judas joins that chorus of, Lord, is it me? Lord, is it me? Lord, is it me? Sometimes singing the solo, Lord, is it me? 
Surely that can't be me. Jesus tells Judas, hurry up and do what you have to do. Yes, go quickly. This deal didn't work out as planned. It goes sour like a drug bust. And Judas tries to void the contract and his conspirators, quote, a no refund policy. A disappointed soul, Judas is, a troubled soul, a divided soul. He can't go back to Jesus and he can't go back to his co-conspirators. So there in the night, in the dark, he hangs himself. It's said to have come to this far, it's sad, it's sad to have come this far and just miss it all. Just a side note here, my friends. Never fight Judas. Leave him to himself. He'll hang himself. Can this be it? Can this be it? Pilate didn't listen to his wife when she cautioned him uh, to separate himself from this plot. So it is said from that day that Pilate let the people choose Barabbas over Jesus. He was seen walking through the palace, wringing his hands as if he was washing them. No basin, no water, no towel. The conscious trying to cleanse itself from guilt. Can this be it? Can this be it? The thieves who hang, one on each side of him, have been returned to those who would claim what remained of their mangled, unrecognizable flesh. Mary never imagined she would one day bury her eldest child. That would be his to bury her. That would be his responsibility in taking care of her. Although she knew he would be the savior of his people and the world, surely there had to be some other way to do this. I have no burial fund, no insurance, no plot, no tomb, or a spot where to bury my firstborn. What are we going to do with this body? He, was, he has touched the hearts and minds and souls of many from the very least to the aristocracy of his day. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and he departed. A dead man laying in another man's tomb. And this is where the story really should conclude. Can this be it? Can you imagine that when they buried him, that the story kept unfolding? The dead have been buried, the grieving are being comforted. Shiva will begin right after Sabbath. The mortician has been paid. The body has been tucked away. And the stone has been rolled to the entrance of the tomb. The business of him being dead will soon be done with. But really, can this be it? Is this how the story ends? There is a matter of some unfinished business anointing the body and giving him a decent and appropriate burial. Can this be it? Jesus is dead. Jesus is dead. Jesus is dead. He meets his old nemesis, Satan in hell. Scandalous. He thought he got away with murder. Satan is sure and certain, well, it's all over now because I got you. I got you. I got you. I told you I would get you if it was the last thing I would do. 
What the what? What? That Jesus is down here interrupting my business. He can't just stay down here and burn and be tormented, can he? He did this once before, showed up in a fiery furnace, and got them boys out unharmed. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Dead men are walking out of here. Chains are falling off. The captives are being led captive by Jesus. It doesn't happen in hell. I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. I want to say to Jesus, what are you doing to my hell? What are you looking for? What are you looking at me for? Jesus shakes his hand and the sound of jingling of keys. He has keys and he's talking. A dead man talking, that's different down here. You only hear weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. He's walking and talking and saying, I won't be here long. I won't be here long. Really? How you getting out of here? No man takes my life. Really? Did you miss your own crucifixion? I lay it down and I can take it up again. I won't be here long. I won't be here long. It's a 72-hour drive-by, just setting some folk free, delivering some souls from you, Satan. I have to keep a promise that I made to a thief when I told him today he would be with me in paradise. When I leave here, I'll be taking paradise with me. No, this is not it. In about 72 hours, you will only have an empty grave. You all will, you'll already have an empty tomb. And yet in 72 hours, uh, you'll have empty dead man's clothes. I can't be seen walking around in dead man's clothes. Can this be it? Uh, well, I'm just passing through. I have the keys to death, to hell, and the grave. I let myself in, and I'll let myself out. Yes, I know the word on the street and around town, from the White House to the poor house, uh, on the news and in the schools and even in some churches. Jesus is dead. Jesus is dead. Jesus is dead. But imagine, can't no grave hold my body down. Can this be it? Oh. 
and the sound of his voice is so sweet all oh, the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he
And 